This video is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. And I say, hey. Arthur says the only two people more annoying than DW are the Tibble Twits. The terrible twosome excel at giving DW an inferiority complex the size of Canadian Oklahoma. The Tibble Tumors set up a deadly tiger trap in their front yard. Makes you wonder what happened to their parents. They're disappointed when Principal Haney falls into the trap instead. So wait, tigers are animals, but bears are people? How does this world work? It's best not to think about it. Mrs. Reed volunteers to watch over the Tibble Taints while their grandma is out. By which I mean she volunteers DW to watch over them. DW tries to get the Tibble Twats to play peacefully, only to have them destroy her favorite coloring book. Doesn't feel so good when it happens to you, does it? D.W. begs Arthur to help her watch over the Tibble Tyrants, since he's babysat for them before. Yeah, I told him a story. <laughs> Mrs. Reed doesn't do a goddamn thing while her house is torn to shreds. D.W. offers to read them a story. The Tibble Tools call B.S., as even they don't know how to read yet. No way, no way, no way, no way! The fuck? The Tibble Toilets call her bluff and ask her to read a picture book for them, because no four-year-old could possibly recite Little Red Riding Hood from memory. D.W. digs herself into a deeper hole by picking a book with no pictures, which I think we can all agree are the dumbest kinds of books. She starts her story in the middle of the book, where all stories start. D.W. spends the next hour verbally stroking her own ego by rewriting her own personal history to make herself the hero of every terrible situation she's brought upon herself. Her thinly veiled self-insert goes on an adventure where she must rescue her snowball from her evil brother who's also a Transformer, which is somehow a bad thing? DW paints herself as the greatest thing that happened to humanity since sliced fucking Wonder Bread. She can ride a no-wheeler! So, a boat? Her story goes further off the rails as BW steals her aunt's wedding ring to cure her parents' spinach poisoning. Unfortunately, she first needs to find her missing blankie in the maze mark to activate the ring's power. <sighs> Joe Fallon, what were you smoking when you wrote this episode? B.W. manages to escape the maze after finding her snowball. Whoopty fucking do. She also finds her blankie inside Crazy Bus, even though it's a completely different color. Surprise, surprise, it turns out to be a trap set by Arthur and Buster. Luckily, Spanky the Eagle shows up to kick ass and take names. Arthur is defeated thanks to his own self-destruct button and Spanky dies like a bitch. B.W. gives Spanky a proper send-off with the help of President Hank Hill. <laughs> Spanky was the bravest, boldest, best bird. America, fuck yeah. The Tibble Turds are moved to tears as their grandma returns from the store. They decide to take the book with them so their grandma can finish reading it. When Arthur points out D.W.'s ruse will be exposed, she admits she doesn't care as she only wanted to be superior for one afternoon. Short-term games for a pint-sized pain. Lucky for DW, the dynamic dimwits assume the book magically changed on its own, proving the only ones dumber than DW are the Tibble... Um... Look, there's only so many words that start with T. Let's review. DW became hell-bent on proving she was better than the Tibble Twins, despite her inability to read, ride a bike, or tell time. When the Tibbles destroyed their own yard trying to kill someone, D.W. dreaded the idea of having to spend a whole hour with them indoors. The role of babysitter was foisted upon her by her mother, which she was woefully unprepared for. She lost her mind after only a few minutes because no one should ever be forced to spend time with children. She lied about being able to read to one-up her supposed friends, and made up a whole story which only served to stroke her ego. When Arthur pointed out she couldn't keep up the ruse forever, D.W. admitted she only cared about making herself look good in the moment. And as bad as the Tibbles might be, keep in mind their bad behavior is a partial byproduct of being raised by a single grandparent, who is clearly an overwhelmed pushover. What's D.W.'s excuse? F you, D.W. And I say, hey. hey, I have a Patreon. Sign up at patreon.com slash mattneff to get your name in the thank you credits, along with early access to every FUDW and the chance to vote for future episodes. If there's a movie or show you'd like me to talk about, top tier patrons can commission a review for my channel. Check out the link in the description to become an FUDW superfan. Next time on FUDW... <gasps> Fire drill.